Hi, it's a lipstick gal. Thank you so much for watching today. I wanted to show you what I got in my Christmas in July order from Sydney Grace. And I wanted to use this guy today. This is the brand new Coffee Talk palette. I also picked up uh, a dozen singles. So these are my new ones. Um, but thank you so much for watching today and thank you for being subscribed. I'm just gonna start by, um, I haven't even swatched these yet. Oh, look at this. Look how pretty these are. So this is the light version of this palette. I love that Sydney Grace does multiple versions of the same color story, a light and a deep, so that people with different skin tones can still have the appropriate brow bone highlight, you know, um, crease color, like all of the things that they would need to do a complete and total look. And a lot of the shades will be the same, but like, this guy here, this light one here, is much deeper in the deep palette. Um, the same is true, I think, with this one and with this one here. I love that they keep that in mind when they're creating palettes. Uh, the one that I got last summer, the Summer Days palette, also comes in a light and a deep. Their, um, oh, I forget what the name of it, something, a love palette, also comes in a light and a deep. I love that they do that. That is one of my absolute favorite things about Sydney Grace. So I'm just gonna start grabbing some eyeshadow brushes. It's so satisfying. I don't know why that is. Always love doing that. So the mirror in here is really nice. I remember my first palette that I got from Sydney Grace was the Autumn's Rain palette and the mirror was terrible. It was a real ripply, wonky mirror and I really, it was like, it was like at a fun house. And we were like, wait, what's going on here? So I love that they have definitely stepped up their packaging and that they have better mirrors in there. I'm gonna start with this cool shade here called Cold Brew. It's kind of like a taupey shade, a cool taupe shade. I'm just gonna plop this here on the outer corner. I have never been a person who loves cool toned eyeshadows, but I'll tell you recently, in the last 10, almost 12 months, I have really started to see the draw of cool toned eyeshadows. Maybe I was just choosing the wrong ones for me. Ones that worked well for other people just looked terrible on me. I looked like I was, you know, trying to play Morticia Adams or, you know, and, and that's a look for a costume party or for Halloween, but not for every day. Um, and it's definitely not the look that I enjoy or appreciate, but I have to have the right tones of cool shades. And this one is beautiful. I'd heard about Sydney Grace for a long time and because it's an indie brand and not a brand that you can, you know, walk into Sephora or Ulta and find, I was always a little hesitant. I didn't want to just rush out and buy something from a brand I had never tried or be able to go into a store and swatch. That really makes all the difference. Not that we can swatch these days anyway. Um, but I, I was always hesitant. And in 2019, I made my first purchase because I loved the way the products were performing in a video I saw on Mel Thompson's channel. She was doing a Christmas in July, like here's what's coming and here's what the products are like and here's what I recommend sort of video. And I was like, wait, what? Those, that eyeshadow looks like that. And I will tell you, I fell in love with their pressed pigments and I have not looked back. I am, um, <laughs> I need to get back on the bandwagon, but I'm in the middle of doing a declutter series. And I definitely have the inclination that I'm gonna be decluttering a lot of my single shadows because all I really use are Sydney Grace. And I feel like that says a lot about the quality, that says a lot about the affordability. They are more expensive than ColourPop, but I feel like the quality level is on a completely different level. It's like you're going you know, from here to like, and I feel like for me, it's worth it. I feel like that one shade is so pretty and I could definitely you know, put like a light shimmer on the lid and call it good, but we're gonna do a little bit more. I'm gonna go into the deepest shade in here. This one's called Espresso. And I am going to pick that up on a smaller brush and just kind of intensify this outer corner just a hint. Part of me is wondering if I should keep this look all matte. And then the other part of me goes, absolutely not. We're having a little bit of a break in the heat. Oh my it's been triple digits for the last several weeks and we're finally at the point where um, I just took my daughters to the library and when I dropped them off I was like it's two o'clock in the afternoon and it's only 90 degrees I was like oh it feels so good out here and I realized I'm never one to say that 90 feels amazing but when you've been living in 100 and 
seven, 110, 90 feels amazing. I'm gonna use this light shade here. This one's called Crema. And I'm gonna put this in my inner corner and a little bit under the arch of my brow. I wanna go too frosty, just a little bit. I love the pressed pigments from Sydney Grace and these are the ones on the bottom row. And I'm trying to decide what I wanna use. And I, woo, this one here is called Ristretto. I'm gonna use that kind of like on the inner third of my lid just lightly. We'll blend in a minute. This middle shade here is called Latte, and this is what I'm gonna put kind of like next to it. This last one here is Cup of Joe. Do I, I might wanna put a little Cup of Joe like right here on the end. I'm gonna take a totally clean blending brush and just see if I can get these guys to go from lightest to darkest. As I was blending, I found that I got my color a little lower than I wanted here. So I just take a sponge that has a sharp edge to it, lay it here, and then just kind of drag it up. And it helps to take off any excess that I have and keep my eye look going up as opposed to starting to slide down just a little bit. So I'm gonna grab a smaller brush and go back into that first shade called Cold Brew. I'm gonna put some of this on my lower lash line. I'm gonna grab that lighter shade crema just a little bit and make sure I have that going um, into the lower lashes. Threw on some liner, mascara, and deepened up my lipstick, and I really love this eyeshadow palette. Now, I can tell you that I probably won't end up with an eye look this dark every time I reach for this palette. I purposefully pushed myself to use shades in here that I would normally not instantly gravitate towards because my the ones that I'm like, ooh, look at that, would be like these two guys up here and this guy here in the middle and probably staying over here. Like the lighter, more neutral shades, I purposefully pushed myself to go for the cooler tones the cooler tones. And using these darker metallics down here, it was very much a purposeful choice. And so I probably won't wear something like this all the time, but I do kind of like that it has kind of like a old gold, almost antique color to the lid. I really like that a lot. Let me swatch this palette for you so you know what it is that this palette can do. So here are all of the swatches. Uh, this lightest one here is Crema. These first three here are the top row. These two and this one down here are the second row and these guys right along here are the bottom row. And you can see how we have uh, these three and this one here are the four you know, metallic shades and everything else is matte. I really like the look that I got. The one shadow that gave me problems is the deepest shade in here this one called Espresso. And when I was blending it in, I found that um, where I placed the color initially, uh, that's kind of where it sat and I really had to work to blend out. And it could just be that I don't use dark shades that often. And so I'm not used to really having to blend them out because all of my lighter shades, you know, just you tap it in and then start buffing and it's like perfectly diffused. I feel like that just could be user error because I'm not used to using shades this deep, kind of concentrated out here on the edge. Blended fine, but it took just a little bit more work the Coffee Talk palette is normally $33. You could buy it individually. I think it's out of stock right now, but it was free with a purchase of $65 or more on the first day of the sale. And these are the shades that I picked up during the first day of the sale. And I know that some of these look so, so, so similar to each other. My goal was to go through the entire Sydney Grace catalog of all the shades they had for sale beforehand and then pick the ones that I feel would kind of finish out my Sydney Grace collection. There's a lot of shade that they have, bright blues, yellows, lime greens. Those are shades that I would never use. I could buy them, but they would sit there and be useless to me. So these, this is my other Sydney Grace palette. And you can see I do have some greens. I do have some purples. I do have this slightly bluish shade here, but that's about as blue as I go. But I have a lot of, um, neutral warm tones and I do love olivey green shades. So I was trying to think of things that I could add to what I already, oops, 
a lot. Um, I wanted to look for shades that would fit well into what I already had and would kind of fill some of those holes. This one here is one I knew I wanted for sure. This is a warmer brown. This one is called San Diego. I also knew that I am starting to really like cool tone shades, so I picked this one up here. This one is Speedway. This shade right here is one that a lot of people love and has been around for a while. This one's called French Hens. And this one here is Plumat. These were the four matte shades that I got. Let me quickly swatch them for you. So San Diego, Speedway, French Hens, and Plumat. This is a new shade for this year, I think. This one's called Blondie. This is Strawberries and Cream, Blushed. And the one green I picked up is called Pear Tree. This is Blondie, Strawberries and Cream, Blushed, and Pear Tree. And these are just like this Blondie one here is just so crazy metallic. I, that's what I love about these. They just look so gorgeous on the skin and they reflect in such a beautiful, beautiful way. This one's called Winter Garden. This is Save the Dance. This is Siren and Golden Strawberry. Okay, so I'm running out of room, sorry. <laughs> uh, Winter Garden. This one here is Save the Dance. This is Siren. And this one right here is Golden Strawberry. So I feel like with the rest of these 12 shades here, I have most of everything that I already need here. And these shades would just give me a little bit more variety. My goal is not to have like every single shade that Sydney Grace makes, although that would be fun. I know there would be a lot that would be neglected and not really get used. I know the type of makeup wearer I am. I know that I like more mid-tone and soft shades. I do love like really heavy metallics. So give me a shade like this every single day. This will make me so happy for years to come. With my established palette, I can go green, I can go purple, I can kind of go rosy blushy tones, some cooler tones, and then I have a lot of really easy to use, but obviously not too dark um, browns in here. And that's really my, my preferred area. It's kind of like my safe zone, but I have those really shifty shades, those duochromes, or um, those really foiled pigments that really kind of take me outside of what is kind of like my little safe square. This is where I live, and these kind of push me outside just a little bit. Well, I'm a little bit of a mess. <laughs> I am so glad that I took that leap of faith and based on other people's swatches and watching them apply their tutorials and hearing so much positive, I'm glad that I took a chance on them as an indie brand. I really think that they are doing a fantastic job. Their formulas are beautiful. They wear really, really, really well. I don't deal with a lot of fallout, even with some of the darker shades, but I am also using really high quality brushes. I definitely feel like good tools and excellent product, and it makes me look like I have more skill than I really have. I really love Sydney Grace eyeshadows. I have not come across a single one that I don't really, really enjoy. There are some that I use more than others, but that's just me sitting in my comfort zone. I will tell you, I love that they finally started doing these nine pan palettes. Last year was the first year they did these nine pan palettes. I'm glad they did more of them this year because I really feel like this is a great way if you're not comfortable picking out those individual shades to create your own nine pan or 12 pan or 15 pan palette, whatever. You definitely want someone to make a, a color story for you. I feel like these palettes are a great way to go. I love that I have three of these. Before they started doing those nine pan palettes, they had been doing bundles. This is the Raspberry Kiss bundle. This is the Mountain Trail bundle. And you were still getting nine different shades that were all in a cohesive color story for $33 as part of their Christmas and July sale. I picked up both of these bundles during a previous sale in 2019. And it's really what tip the scales for me, that mountain trail bundle, those greens and kind of olivey tones, I was head over heels in love with those. And I still reach for those a lot. I'll tell you, I feel like out of, I have ColourPop singles, I have MAC singles, I have uh, Makeup Geek singles, I have a lot of different singles. And I will tell you the only ones I reach for with any regularity are the ones in these palette right here. So I feel like I need to get a slightly larger palette and put all of my Sydney Grace because uh, these guys right here, they're not gonna fit in this palette because she's full already. But I wanna kind of keep them all together so that when I open it up, I have all of my Sydney Grace choices. 
Thank you so much for watching today. Let me know if you've ever made a purchase from Sydney Grace. Have you been intrigued and haven't done it? What keeps you from kind of dipping your toe into the indie makeup scene? Is it not being able to swatch for yourself? Is it being concerned about are the photos accurate online? Or is it just out of sight, out of mind? For a long time that was me because I didn't see them in store. I forgot about them, but I don't now because they really are that good. Thank you so much for watching today. Let me know your favorite Sydney Grace item down in the comments, and I will see you again soon. Bye.